Hey guys, Quiff the Lazy Geek here and welcome back to the channel. Today I want to talk a bit about how to use a ZWEF together with the SV Boni uh, 555. In particular, there's a little trick that needs to be used to make sure that you get good focus when you use it with something like the SI Air or like what I have here, which is the uh, 2600 MC Air, which is a, a smart camera with the ASI Air Control Center by ZW uh, inside it. This kind of gear here is great for a portable setup. It's also, uh, with the exception of the camera, on the lower end of uh, prices for uh, astrophotography telescopes and astrophotography equipment. It's very compact, very good for travel, etc. Uh, but a lot of people have had issues with the SV555 and some other cheap telescopes are affected as well. And especially when you're trying to get autofocus via an electronic focuser and the SI Air, you can have some issues uh, due to the way that the star shapes behave slightly when they're slightly out of focus still. So I want to address that in this uh, video. And uh, this is the second uh, sample of the SV555 lens that I'm using. The original one that I had worked beautifully. Uh, I learned later that there was a back focus issue with the lenses when you were using 55 millimeters of back focus. This is now resolved. So this is a second sample that I have that does not have this issue at all. And uh, there were also on some of the uh, lenses optical issues with like kind of a pinched or misaligned uh, optics. And SV Money tells me that they have tested every single lens in their warehouse and they guarantee that the optics are going to be good. And this is one of those lenses. So this lens has been tested, but apparently not specifically from me. It's been like every single lens in their warehouse that is the SV555 has been tested. Uh, so they've done another, another layer of quality control, uh, which is you know, a good thing. Still, I want to give some tricks uh, with the EEF on this. So let's get to it. So first things first, let's talk about the installation. For the installation, I've taken the lens and camera assembly off from the uh, dovetail assembly that I have here. And we have, as part of the kit that comes with the lens, we have uh, a timing belt. We have this bracket to install the focuser. We have this uh, little thing here, whatever it's called, which is kind of a coupler that uh, we will put on the EF. And then, and then we have two tiny grub screws that come part of the package. So the first step is to take those two tiny grub screws and we can take the hex wrench provided to put the uh, grub screw on top and then we have at the base of this uh, coupler, the ability to thread them in. We don't need to thread them in the whole way. We just need to make sure that they're within the uh, coupler there. And then we can look at the ZWEF itself and find the flat face on the, uh, whatever we call this uh, metal thingy that uh, juts out of the EEF. And we want to make sure that one of the two um, grub screws actually faces this flat part on this uh, rod here directly. So we just put it like that. We make sure that uh, we leave some space between this coupler and the EF so that we don't have uh, a, th a scenario where I've like put it all the way in and then we have this metal part here actually having friction against the body of the EF. We want to avoid that. So we make sure that we're not all the way uh, in. We're just enough so that one of the grub screws will be in contact with the flat part of the rod that is jutting off of the EF. And once we're done, we have one of the grub screws that is basically facing the flat part of the rod that's jutting out of the EF. And I can just tighten that up until it's perfectly tight. And once I'm ready, I can do that for the second grub screw. And we're done, we have uh, this installed. Okay, next step, we take the uh, bracket for the focuser and we want to install it something like uh, this. And we have two uh, hex screws that are provided. So I'm just going to uh, thread them from the bottom of the dovetail plate into the holes that we have uh, here. And this is how it looks like. We have the screws uh, holding the bracket and I made sure that the screws are not too tight so I can move the bracket around like that. We'll tighten them later. The next part is simple. I take the EF and I put it into the bracket. Then I want to use the uh, screws that have been provided to secure it via the slot that we have here. So now I have those two screws in and just like before, I've made sure that I don't tighten them in too much so I can move things around still quite a bit. 
I can then take my lens. There's a locking knob for the focus uh, circle of the focus ring that we have here. So we want to unthread that and remove the locking knob. And to be clear, this is the locking knob of the focus ring, not the one from the aperture ring here. Next, I can put back the uh, lens. And what I will want to do is take the uh, timing, timing belt. And the timing belt can just be uh, put in there. And what we'll want to make sure of is that it is on the uh, focus ring here. And we want to pull it down so that it can also be put on the focuser. And so for me, this is how it looks like. I want to make sure now that I place the focuser in a place where uh, the, uh, the, the focus ring, the timing belt is properly on top of the focus ring. And the uh, coupler on the EF is actually aligned with the timing, timing belt. This is exactly what we have here. Now that we have uh, this, I can use the screws at the bottom here, which I haven't tightened yet, but I can now tighten them because we are in alignment. Okay, now the screws are tightened. We need to make, now to make sure that the timing belt has enough tension at all times. And so for that, it's a very manual operation. I tend to grab the focuser with one hand, pull it down like that with all of my strength. And with the other hand, while I'm doing that, I can tighten the other two screws at the end here. So the goal is to make sure that we have a good belt tension. So tighten with one hand with all of your strength, while with the other hand, you tighten those two screws here. And this is what I've done. Now we're good. And if we look at the timing belt itself, a good test is just to tap there and make sure it's relatively tight. You may be able to still move it a little bit on the uh, focus ring, but it should be somewhat difficult to completely slip it off. Okay, and that is for the physical setup of the EF to the SV555 using only the stuff that has been provided with the lens as you purchase the lens. Now in the ASI Air with the ASI Air, Air turned on, and of course you want to make sure that you have the EF connected to your ASI Air, but with that turned on, then what you want to make sure of is you go to the SI Air, you connect your equipment as usual, and make sure that you tap on uh, EF at the top right, then on autofocus, and then you can see my autofocus exposure is three seconds and my step size is 100. And for the SV555 in general with the EF, a step size of 100 should work well enough. And the exposure time is three seconds, even though I'm not using any narrowband filters in there, I'm just using no filter. I'm using whatever the uh, window of the camera has, which is a UVIR cut filter basically. So for that, especially for an f4.5 lens, three seconds sounds like a lot of time actually. And I'll show you why it's actually not. And that's the little trick that I think you need to follow with the SV555 and with other telescopes or lenses that have the same type of symptom. And I'll show you how an autofocus uh, run on the ZWSI Air with the EF on this particular lens looks like. So we go to autofocus, we click on uh, start, and let's wait for stuff to appear. So you'll see that after a couple of exposures, uh, the star shape is getting closer and closer to good focus, which is fine. So the autofocus is creating its V curve where it's just measuring the star size uh, with regards to the uh, focus point uh, of your EAF and basically tries to minimize that star size. But you see, if you look at the top left of the, uh, of the star, we have in the star shape, uh, it's a, a, a big circle, while at the same time on the bottom right of the star, you see a, an area of high energy on the star. It almost looks like a star within the star. And if you have shorter exposures, this can actually confuse the EAF and the SI Air into thinking that the star is in focus. And that is exactly why I'm using longer three seconds exposures. When the focus is actually mostly done, you'll see that the points, at least for me with this three second exposures, they're kind of all over the place, but the curve itself is fine. And because the ASI Air uses a two pass algorithm, it will now just like go downhill until it finds the smaller star shape and you'll be in focus. And this is what happened here. We are now in really good focus with the SV555. 
And if we look at the results, it looks perfectly in focus. The stars are nice and pinpoint throughout the uh, field of view, although there is some chromatic aberration, uh, but still a very good result on APS-C for an f4.5 lens of that size. But you can see that for the SI Air, you need those longer exposures. In fact, I can show you a screenshot of the uh, same process, but with five second exposures, and you'll see the curve is actually, the points are much more consistently on the curve. And I do believe it's because of those longer exposures. I've also tested with a dual band narrow band filter, that's seven nanometer uh, band passes. And that was the SV220, again from SV Bonnie. And for that, I needed 10 to 15 seconds exposures with the SIR to make sure that everything is fine and that we get to the point of best focus. To note that uh, with Nina, I didn't really have any such issues. In fact, <laughs> I kind of coded a long time ago a workaround for this kind of problem. So I think with Nina, you can get by with uh, short exposures, but with the SIR, like what we have in here, um, it's definitely working like that. Just basically put a step size of 100, exposure time if you're using broadband of three or five seconds, if you're using narrowband, 10 to 15 seconds. And you know, as long as the belt is tight enough and there's no slippage of the belt, you should be fine. So with that, you have all of the instructions that you need to have proper EF focus with this SV555 because I have seen cases, including myself, when I first tried with the EF, where I ended up with the ZWSI Air at the wrong point of focus because of that like energy concentration, like, like, like that star within the star that we saw earlier. But with the longer exposures, we should be fine and we actually get to the point of best focus. Okay, I hope this was useful. If it was, please leave a like on the video. It really helps the channel out. You can leave a comment as well. Do you have this lens? Are you planning on getting it? Because it is a budget astrophotography lens. Uh, so yeah, it's, it's very good to have that on the market, even though it has has its teething issues apparently. But yeah, let me know down in the comments what you think of that. Uh, do you have any additional tips and tricks? Let us know down below. And of course, if you want to support the channel at no cost to you and you're planning on buying anything from SV Boni or Amazon or High Point Scientific, Agena, etc., if you do so after clicking one of the links that I have down in the description, it will help me out at no cost to you. And if you want to directly sponsor the channel and make these videos possible, uh, you can become a channel member. Uh, this is the join button next to the subscribe button. You can subscribe as well if you're new, by the way, in which case welcome. Or you can join the channel as a Patreon. The link is down in the description. My channel members, my Patreon supporters, you know it. You make this everything possible. Thank you so much for your support. And some of my Patreon members have access to my videos early and without ads. With that, again, I hope this was useful. I look forward to your comments with any additional tips or tricks that you may have. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget whenever you can to look up at the stars and I'll see you next time.